Hi, thanks for joining me today. It's Geraldine from the Paper Puffin Studio, and today I'm going to show you how to make this center step easel card. This card stands up nicely for display, and you can see here it appears to be glowing on the inside. That's because I've placed a tiny tea light on the inside, a plastic one, of course. So when I remove that, I can just fold up the card, and the card can be mailed flat. I've made another version as well just to show you, and this one is one with a Halloween theme. The one I'm going to show you today is this Christmas version. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get started. Let's begin by reviewing all of the pieces that you're going to need to build this card. You're going to need a piece of your base color measuring five and a half by 11 inches. You'll need a piece of designer series paper measuring two and three quarters by three and seven eighths. And another piece measuring five and one quarter by one and a half inches. You'll need two pieces of coordinating cardstock, each of these measuring five and a half inches by one and one eighth of an inch. These will get trimmed down to smaller sizes as we go. I went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut all of the pieces that I'm gonna be using for the card. These pieces came from a combination of stamp sets, one being at home with you, and one being fireside trimmings. Now we're ready to do the scoring and the cutting for the base of the card. So with the 11 inch edge along the top of my trimmer, I'm first going to line up my paper at the one inch mark. I then am going to, using my scoring blade, I'm going to score down to one and a quarter inches. To make sure I can see this clearly, I'm going to tuck a little piece of paper that is lighter in color underneath so I can easily follow where this score line will go. So using my scoring blade, I'm gonna go down to one and a quarter. And I'll just do that a couple of times. I then am going to, keeping the paper lined up at one inch, I'm gonna go down to four and a quarter and score down from four and a quarter. So lining up my scoring blade with four and a quarter I'm going to go from four and a quarter down and I'll just do that a couple of times as well. Now I'm going to move my paper over and the paper will get moved over to two inches and I'll repeat that. So I'm at four and a quarter. I'm going to score down I'll lift, go up to the top, score down to one and a quarter. I then I'm going to move my paper over to five and one eighth of an inch. I'm still using my scoring blade. Tuck this in again so I can see. And I'm going to score to one and a quarter. Lift this up. And then I'm gonna score from four and a quarter to the bottom. I'm now gonna slide my paper over to the eight and one eighth of an inch mark and I'm going to score all the way from top to bottom of the paper. Now I need to do a cut. So I'm gonna turn my paper so that I have the five and a half inch edge along the top. I'm going to line it up at one and a quarter inches. And I'm going to be cutting from this score line now I'm ready to walk you through this first cut line. So to show you what I've done, 
I took my paper with the five and a half inch edge along the top and I'm lining it up with the one and a quarter mark on the right hand side. With my cutting blade in place at one inch, I then cut from one inch down to five and one eighth of an inch. That allows me to cut from this first score line to this score line. I'm going to be now doing the same thing, cutting from this score line down to this score line. So now that I have that first cut made, I'm going to be repeating it on this side. I'm going to be cutting from the edge of this score line to the edge of this score line. So this time I'll use the left hand side of my cutter as my guide. I'll line up at one and a quarter inches. I'll put my cutting blade at one inch and I'll be bringing it down to the five and one eighth inch mark. Just going to tuck this in so I can see the numbers because it's difficult to see the numbers against the dark paper. So I'm cutting from one inch to five and one eighth of an inch. And that will bring me from the score line to the score line, score line to score line. That's it for the cutting of your base. Now I'm going to be doing one last score mark. Now for this last score line, I'm lining up my paper with the 11 inch edge along the top. I'm putting the paper at the 4 and 1 8 inch mark and I'm going to be scoring from the cut line to the cut line. So I'm going to line up my scoring blade right at the cut line and I'm going to bring it down to the cut line. To make sure it's scored well, I'll just do that a couple of times. So now that I have all of the scoring and the cutting done, I'm ready to fold and burnish the base of the card. To fold and burnish, you're going to use these first score lines here and fold those as a mountain. Then the next one will be a valley, and then this top panel as well as these two will become mountains. This portion underneath will just get folded so that it can get tucked inside. I'm now ready to attach the designer series paper. So for this piece, I'm going to be putting snail glue on the back and I'm going to be attaching it right here on this panel. I'll do that so that I have an even edge all the way around. I then will turn my paper over and I'll be taking the other piece of designer series paper, putting snail glue on the back, and attaching it right here. I'll go ahead and do that step. So to show you what I've done, I attached the designer series paper here to this panel. Then with the paper flipped around, I attached the other piece of designer series paper here. I'm going to be using the Pinewood Planks 3D embossing folder to emboss the coordinating cardstock. So I'll be laying the strips in like this and I'll run those through the embossing machine. We'll pick up there. I'm now going to need to trim these pieces of embossed paper so that they will fit here and here and then at the very bottom. There won't be any of that embossed paper on this panel in between. To make those fit, I'm going to be lining the paper up at 7 eighths of an inch and cutting. This 7 eighths of an inch piece is going to go there. And then I'm going to be lining this up at 3 inches. And then this piece will get attached here. I'll do that again. So again, lining up at 7 eighths of an inch cut. That will be the smaller piece for here. And then at 3 inches on this side for this piece to go here. I'll go ahead and glue those pieces of cardstock onto the base.
The next step is going to be cutting out this space on the base of the card. So to do that, I'll line up this mantle where I want it to go on the card. I like it to line up with the bottom edge of the designer series paper and have it evenly spaced on the front of the card. I then am going to take a pencil and I'm going to trace out this inner square. I'm going to be cutting this out because I'm going to be putting a piece of vellum in here and I need this piece gone. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut out this square. I'll pick up there. So I've removed this square and then the mantle will fit over top with the square as an opening. I'm then going to take a small piece of vellum and cut it out to fit and glue it in place. I've placed a mini glue dot in each of those four corners. I cut out a piece of vellum and now I'm going to attach the vellum to the back of the mantle. The mantle will then get propped up on dimensionals and placed on the front of the card like this. Now here's the finished card. I attached the lanterns, the wreath, the mantle, and the sentiment with dimensionals. I used Tombow glue to attach these topiaries as well as the garland. And I used mini glue dots to attach the logs and the flames. You can see how it stands up nicely for display and you can place the tea light on the inside behind the vellum to make the fireplace glow. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.